Okay, now let's try some compositions, uh, compositions of functions, okay? Uh, f of x is x minus 2, g of x is x squared. What I want to do is do a couple of compositions of f with g for different x values, for negative 1 and negative 3, okay? So let's start with this one. This is asking me to do the composition of g with f for the value <coughs> x equals 4, okay? So what I'm going to do, you know, this piece right now, uh, what I'm going to do is take f, the function f, which is x minus 2, and substitute it in into g. This is what this is asking me to do. Take f and substitute it into g. So I'm going to write out the function g. Okay? g of x is x squared. I'm going to take out the x and substitute in f. Because that's what it's asking me to do. Substitute in f. Okay? So here I'm going to substitute in f of x, which is x minus 2. Right? The f of x equals x minus 2. I plug them both into g. And what I get is g of f of x equals x minus 2 squared, which if you FOIL, this is x minus 2 times x minus 2, you're going to get x squared minus 2x minus 2x minus 2x minus 2x plus 4, which is x squared minus 4x plus 4. There is your g of f of x. And what must I do now? Substitute in the value that they're asking me to substitute, which is 4. So plug in 4 here. 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 4. That's 16 minus 16 plus 4. These cancel, so g of f of x equals 4. Oh, g of f of 4 equals 4, because that's the value that I substituted in. That's your answer. g of f of 4 equals 4. Okay, you know what? I'm going to skip number 10 and go ahead and do number 11 uh, already. Why? Because I already did the composition of g and f, right? I finished that. This, that, this is it. The composition of g and f is x squared minus 4x plus 4. I know that one already because I already did it. g of f of x is x squared minus 4x plus 4. All I got to do now is substitute in the value that they're asking me, not, not negative 3. So g of f of negative 3 is negative 3 squared minus 4 times negative 3 plus 4. So that's 9 plus 12 plus 4. So that'll be 25. G of f of negative 3 is 25. Done. Okay. Okay. Number 10, this one's telling me to do the composition of f with g. That means that I'm going to substitute g into f. So in this one, I start by writing out the function f, which is f of x equals x minus 2. Take out the x, only the x, and in its place, plug in g. g of x on the left side, and x squared on the right side. There it is. There's nothing else to do. I can't simplify that any further. So f of g of x is x squared minus 2. Now all I gotta do is finish by substituting in negative 1. f of g of negative 1 equals negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus 2, which is negative 1. f of g of negative 1 is negative 1. There's your final answer. <clears throat> okay, let's try a couple more compositions. Uh, two different functions this time, but we're basically doing the exact same thing we did in the last few problems, okay? So f, the composition of f with g for negative 5. Once again, in this case, I'm substituting g into f. So I start by writing out f of x which is radical x, take out the x from both sides, in its place I always write empty parentheses. In this side I plug in g of x, which is what I'm trying to do, and in this side I plug in what g of x equals, which is x plus 2, 
squared. Okay, this became so much simpler already. f of g of x is x plus 2 squared radical. The radical, the square root of x plus 2 squared, the radical and the square are going to cancel out, leaving me with x plus 2. There it is. All I gotta do now is plug in negative 5. So f of g of negative 5 is negative 5 plus 2, which is negative 3. There it is. f of g of negative 5 is negative 3. Let's look at 13. Same composition, f with g. So I don't have to do this work again. I already did f, the composition of f and g. f of g of x is x plus 2. f of g of x is x plus 2. You could do it again if you want, plug in g into f, but we just did it right here. And now all I gotta do is plug in 0. f of g of 0 equals 0 plus 2, so f of g of 0 is 2. There. This one's different. It's asking me to do g, the composition of g with f. So I'm plugging in f into g. So I write out g first. g of x is x plus 2 squared. Take out the x. Look how weird that one looks because I put an empty parenthesis here for the x, but everything else is the same, plus 2 parenthesis squared. Okay. Plug in f of x here. And what is f of x equals? Radical x here. And I need to simplify the right side there, okay? So g of f of x equals, here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to do FOIL here. x plus, radical x plus 2 times radical x plus 2. Because that's what squaring means. So let's do it. FOIL, radical x times radical x is x. Radical x times 2 is 2 radical x. 2 times radical x is also 2 radical x. And 2 times 2 is 4. Combine any like terms that you see. I see this. 2 radical x and 2 radical x. So it'll be x plus 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 radical x plus 4. You remember, you can only combine these if they have the exact same uh, radical and the exact same radical inside. Okay. G of f of x. Oh, that's not my final answer. What, is, what, is, what do I still need to do? Plug in 4. So here we go. G of f of 4 equals 4 plus 4 times radical 4 plus 4. That's a lot of 4s. 4 times radical 4. Radical 4 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. So what I get is 4 plus 8 plus 4. And you should be able to get that now. That's 16. G of f of 4 is 16. There's your final answer for that one. Okay, now let's look at a real world situation where you might have to do some composition of functions. Okay, so let's look at this example. It says a car dealer offers a 15% discount off the list price X. So X represents the, the list price of the car right? on the lot. At the same time, the manufacturer offers, offers a $1,000 rebate for each purchase of a car. So there's a 15% discount that the dealer offers, and there's the manufacturer that offers a $1,000 rebate. Okay? So we're going to do a bunch of stuff with that information. First, let's start with A. Ignore everything else for now. Let's just look at A. Write a function. Call it f of x. All right, so there's a function f of x. To represent the price after discount. You gotta identify the difference between those two, right? Discount is the 15% discount. Rebate is the $1,000 rebate, okay? So the price after discount only, no rebate, just discount. So we've talked about this before. Whenever you have a percent discount or a percent decrease or a percent increase, you always start with 100%, always, because that's your beginning amount that you have, okay? So if we start with 100% and we get a 25% discount, that means I'm subtracting 25, no, not 25, 15%. I'm subtracting 15% from the list price, okay? 100% minus 15% is 85%. 100% minus 
However, we don't enter percents into our equations, right? We enter decimals, so 85% is 0 0.85, 85 hundredths. That is, that represents what the, what, what you're actually going to be paying, okay? So here's my function. This is how you're going to write your function f. f of x, let's write it over here. f of x equals 0 0.85 times the price of the car, the original price of the car, which is x, okay? So what you're actually only going to pay is 85% of the price. Of means multiply, so 0.85. That is f of x. That is only after the 15% discount. Nothing to do with the rebate that we're going to do next. Part B. Write a function to represent the price after the $1,000 rebate. This is not a percentage. It's just a $1,000 uh, uh, set value. Okay, That's going to be a much, much, much easier. Let me just write it over here. We're going to use g to represent this one. Now, make sure you understand, this is the, represents the price after the rebate only, no discount. So we're doing separate things, right? That was discount, this is rebate. So g of x will be whatever the price of the car is, x minus $1,000 because of the rebate. And there's your two different functions. $1,000 rebate is this one, 15% discount is that. All right, let's move on to part C. Suppose the list price of a car is 18,000. 18,000. That means x equals 18,000. That's what they're telling you. Use a composite function to find the price of the car if the discount is applied before the rebate. So what are we doing first? Discount first and then rebate. Okay. Discount is applied before the rebate. Discount first, then rebate. So which one first, f or g? F, right? Discount first, then rebate. So what this is really asking us to do is to do this, okay? G, composition with F for 18,000. F first, then G. That's what it's asking us to do, okay? Which basically represents this. G of F of X. I know when x is 18,000. This is what we have to do. Plug in 18,000 into f and then plug it into g. That's what it's asking. So let's do that. f first, then g. f is 0.85x, g is x minus 1,000. So here's what you do. Write g first, g of x equals x minus 1,000. Take out the x. Plug in f which is 0.85x, so f of x on this side, 0.85x on this side. There really is no simplifying to do here. All I'm going to do is just get rid of the parentheses. They are unnecessary. And finally, plug in x, which is 18,000 into this. 18,000. And we're going to get 0 0.85 times 18,000 minus 1,000, okay? Let's see what we get from that. So 0. 0.85 times 18,000 is 15,300. So it's 15,300. Let's take away the $1,000 rebate, and you get 14,300. That is G of F of 18,000. That represents the price of the car if you apply the 15% discount first and then the $1,000 rebate, $14,300. Let me write it here as the answer. G of f of x is $14,300. Okay, and let's look at D. D says, suppose the list price of a car is the same price, Use a composite function to find the price of the car if the discount is applied after the rebate. So rebate first, then discount. It says discount is applied after the rebate. So let me erase this so I can do the work here. We're going to do the uh, rebate first and then the discount. Which function is the rebate function? G. So G first, then F. So what it's asking you to do is to find F of G of X. G first, then F. 
Uh, so let's do that. Find f of x first. f of x is 0.85x. Take out the x, replace it with g of x. g of x on this side, and g of x equals what? x minus 1,000 on that side. We're going to have to distribute here because that's not simplified. So here's what we get. f of g of x equals 0.85x minus 0 0.85 times 1,000. Move the decimal place three times, so it's 850. Okay, and now plug in x, which is 18,000. So f of g of 18,000 equals 0 0.85 times 18,000. minus 850. So what we get? 0 0.85 times 18,000 gives me 15,300, just like before, minus 850, and we get 14,000. F of G of 18,000 is 14,400. That's this one. F of G of X is 14,450. Reasoning. Between part C and D, will the dealer want to apply the discount before or after the rebate? Why? Think about, put yourself in the position of the dealer, not the customer, the dealer, okay? Will the dealer want to apply the discount before or after the rebate, okay? Now, this represents first the discount, then the rebate, right? First the discount, then the rebate, the customer ends up paying 14,300. This represents first the rebate, then the discount, the customer ends up paying 14,450. What's better for the dealer? For the customer, this is better. For the dealer, this is better. The more you pay, the better it is for them. So this is what the dealer wants. G first, then F. G first means rebate first, then discount. So what will the dealer want? The dealer is going to want to apply the rebate first and then give you their 15% discount. If you think about it, that makes sense, right? They want to subtract $1,000 from the price and then say, I'm going to take 15% off of that, not of the total price because that's too much for us. Okay. So it'll be discount. Will the dealer want to apply the discount before or after? The discount will be after. The rebate will be before. Thank <clears throat> you.